All right, so to make it to this point, we've talked about a lot of things through this class. We've talked about weather and climate. We've talked about plants and you know, their distribution. We've talked about building up the landscape. And so now we're going to talk about starting to break down the landscape. We're going to talk about weathering and actually in, essentially how that breaks uh, down in place a material, but also then in another video that's related, talking about how that then uh, move, is often moved across the landscape as well. So because uh, we are talking about breakdown of our material uh, for this video, our uh, song of the video to get us in the mood will be uh, correspondingly Breakdown by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So we have this example here of weather type of weathering going on, I'm able to split apart rocks that we see in the background here in this example of the Devil's Marbles from Australia. And really all this is going to be housed under uh, what we call geomorphology. So the study and really the remaining lectures of this course tie to this idea of, of studying the origin, evolution, kind of how the landscape form it looks, you know, how do we see the landscape, but also you know, how is that distributed and how does that landscape change over time. So you know, the, the main goal here is to understand how does the landscape around us come to look the way it does? How is what were the processes that shaped it? Um, and so you know, Earth, really, especially in longer geologic time scales, has been shaped by various processes. And so we're interested in understanding what those are and how they've given us things like mountains and coasts and, you know, all these various types of different landforms that we'll be talking through. Um, and particularly in this video, what we want to focus on is this idea of denudation. So really any process that's going to be acting to wear away um, and break down in some sort of way uh, the, the landscape. So we're in really going from eventually transporting that material from oftentimes what we term its source, so usually the highest elevations, so things like mountains, to it ultimately usually its sink or kind of into the oceans or other low elevation places. So again, we're here talking about weathering. So again, that's going to be the breakdown kind of in place in various types of ways of materials. Um, but then we're going to be in then talking about how that with actually erosion is moving material, transporting it and depositing it often at lower elevations. Um, and, and so that will be one of the main mechanisms that's accomplished through is a series of mass movements that we'll be talking about in the next video. So uh, again, the, really the principal driving force here is going to be gravity. Of course, gravity always pulling things down, wants to pull it down slope to lower elevations. That's kind of the principal idea and, and thing that's really driving everything going on in these uh, descriptions. So really, because when we look at our landscape, we're seeing really the uh, kind of end product or really ongoing product uh, as our landscapes are continuously changing, even if they're changing very slowly, maybe beyond our individual lifetimes to see a large change, but you know, they may um, in geologic timescale be changing uh, really rapidly or kind of in large in huge ways significant ways and so really we're, we're seeing this reflection between driving forces and resisting forces and so again that primary driving force is gravity but the resisting force is kind of that rock itself the how, its strength to resist these processes of weathering and erosion so for example we have this example of delicate arch which is an arches national park in utah so this arch has been created by differential weathering so some of the rock being there a little more resistant than other being worn out by a series of processes again both uh, weathering in place but then removal of that material by erosion. So again, here in this video, just briefly, we're focusing on weathering. So let's break down to that rock in place. And there'll be three main types of weathering that we're kind of interested in that we can separate out, either physical, chemical, or biological, um, and really different environmental controls that we talked about. So again, things like climate, things like the biome and kind of the plant distribution, those types of factors, and the actual geological makeup um, of the rock itself, can determine what types of weathering are more or less effective in those places. Um, and so you know, this is, we're talking generally occurring at the Earth's surface, though this can occur in soil to some depth. And um, this is really only creating landscape materials. Again, this is not erosion, which is the transport and moving of that. Uh, you know, weathering is a prerequisite to that erosion or changing of the landscape that we're moving material around, but it's just weathering, or, you know, again, changing things in place. So. Again, first, this physical or mechanical type of weathering, 
or having a physical breakdown, breaking apart of material. So, you know, just as its name implies, it is mechanically or physically breaking material down to, into smaller pieces. So we can see kind of an example here where we could start with one big rock, but break it apart into multiple smaller and smaller pieces like we saw with the first slide. Um, and so, you know, this also then generally leads to what we term spheroidal rounding. So I have here, for example, on the left hand side is all in, you know, these squares or boxes. But really, we, we end up seeing physical weathering over long time. Um, and as we'll come to see in some future lectures as well, where we start with kind of more angular breaking apart. We might see that at more higher elevations. So with things like frost action, as we'll cover here in a second. But then really, as those move, or you know, are exposed to weather in other processes over really long time scales, um, you know, the longer kind of those parts are, those smaller components that have been broken apart are exposed to different elements and kind of weather, weather and, and different processes that are breaking, uh, weathering. In this case, um, we get more rounded rocks uh, over time because of that. And again, we'll, we'll see that as well in some future videos. But just for example, so going through some of these processes tied to uh, physical weathering. So there's frost actions where we have kind of constant freezing, we're thawing and freezing and thawing back and forth. Um, we can get these um, rocks and kind of actually in the part, excuse me, the water that kind of gets into small, very small cracks and you kind know, of fractures rock apart over time. And in turn, it produces very sharp angled or blocky rock fields um, that we can see in examples here. So again, this is prevalent in more mid to high latitude areas where we have a lot of freezing and thawing back and forth, um, either within any given year or really especially over the span of multiple times throughout a year or many years, excuse me. And so another example here is salt wedging. So kind of this growth of salt crystals in rock that will break it apart much just like the water did with the, in the last example. This is though more prevalent than in coastal environments, you know, where we have salt water that can be beating across rocks over time, as we see in this left-hand example. But it can also be occurring in very semi-arid environments as well, um, where we have some salt brought in with little moisture that does occur at time, but then kind of evaporate with the water evaporate out, leaves salts behind in the rock, and it can help uh, as well break that apart, as we see on the right-hand example here. So, and a final, another type of example here would be uh, this exfoliation, or where we have kind of the sheeting of rock and breaking apart in the almost layers, thinking of like, think of something like an onion, um, and where we have essentially that occurring after what we term an overburden pressure is removed. So we see on this top right example here, essentially this would be where we have some rock that is formed underneath the Earth's surface, where it was a more molten rock solidified underneath uh, the Earth's surface at some time, so it had all this overlying weight of material, you know, kind of the soil and all the other material above it. But as they say, that was eroded away over time, as we'll come to talk about erosion, um, and you know, essentially, you know, th through long periods of time, millions of years, for example, um, we would be talking about this removal of all this material over top, and eventually that exposure of that rock, and because there's not all that overlying weight anymore, essentially the, the rock, uh, or that kind of one contiguous rock that we see in this example here would almost be able to expand outwards and expands there would essentially start fracturing itself apart. Um, and this most frequently occurs with granite, um, but we can have this occurring with some other types of igneous rocks as well. Um, just an example there uh, of another type of physical type of weathering. So now to move to another type, our chemical weathering, where, where as the name once again implies, we're talking about a chemical alteration. So not at the level of thinking of chemistry, kind of individual molecules here. And so some examples that we'll walk through. Um, and I have a link here showing, kind of talking through just some couple sentence quick description of many of these as well. That could be helpful. Um, but some just quick examples. I'm going to show you some chemical equations here. Not anything you're going to have to memorize, no, for a test. This is just to kind of help you understand a little bit of what's going on. But, you know, with carbonation, as this name implies it's tied to carbon or particularly carbonic acid, and it's changing um, often or the most prevalent tied to uh, limestone dissolution. And so we see this most in limestone environments where essentially the acidity tied to that in, in the soil increases and we have relatively few plants growing. So we see this right bottom right example here. This is from Ireland, actually. Um, but many limestone are what we term karst environments. We don't unfortunately really get to cover karst in this uh, class too short of time. Um, but really where karst are other mainly limestone environments where you get a lot of really interesting formation because of this dissolution uh, and, and carbonation process. Another one, hydrolysis. 
Um, similarly, kind of hydro, um, with hydrogen, oxygen, those are these hydro, um, hydrogen and um, hydroxide uh, ions, and where we get um, this is a very common weathering method for different types of silicates. And one of the main things that we end up seeing with this is, um, especially this can be tied to in part to acid rain. So we get this example of on the right here, a lot of uh, monuments, kind of statues over time, especially when we've had increased acid rain um, due to different human processes going on, um, in addition of that to the atmosphere. Um, we've seen a kind of uptick in the kind of weathering rates of these types of rocks and oftentimes um, to the detriment of these types of statues and such. And finally, oxidation, another one, um, just another example here of a type of chemical weathering. Um, essentially, I could say one word to you here, rust uh, would be the example uh, of what you would most like to see this, so this kind of red color that's coming out of an oxidized state of things like iron uh, and other metal types. Uh, that would, would be that an example that we see here. So this red layering compared to a different rock type here that's not receiving that oxidation and the red outline uh, we see around this rock here as well. And finally, our third type of weathering, which is quickly, um, where a biological weathering, as the name implies, you know, bi the bio different living things uh, can also lead to uh, weathering. So whether that's a breakdown of rock by living organisms. So on the right here, this is an example of lichens or moss growing on rocks and can help actually change the chemical composition in some ways of that rock and start breaking it down physically as well. Um, but also things like, um, you know, many animals um, can help uh, kind of churn up uh, ground and you know, soil and rocks um, and help uh, them weather in those physical and or chemical ways as well. So we see these gopher mounds, for example, on the left here, um, a lot of burrowing animals, uh, the, the roots of trees can help uh, break down, you know, fracture rocks. These are all important biological weathering mechanisms. So we'll talk just very briefly now through some of these main types of weathering. Again, I just want you to know like those, uh, some of the main reasons that are causing those not too in depth of the chemical parts of those or anything. But again, you know, since we're interested in more the geography aspect of it here, I conclude on this slide with noting a few in geography back to well, where are more or less are some of these types of different weathering occurring. So for example, we talked about how frost wedging mostly occurs in colder areas or where we have this fluctuation frequently back and forth between uh, temperatures that are below freezing and above freezing. Um, and the wedging of salt crystals, we talked about that in arid areas along coasts. Um, you know, mechanical weathering in, in general can really occur anywhere where you know, physical rock or material is exposed. But note, you know, from steep to gentle sloping areas, um, that it's generally just going to be prevalent along Earth's surface, really it doesn't occur down in any depth. Uh, of, of the soil or in, in, nearly into uh, the center of rocks where chemical weathering um, can occur actually to some depth within soil. Um, but it's going to be really limited in very cold environments um, and actually occur generally faster and humid where there are you know, more moisture and where more moisture and or warmer climates um, will be where we see chemical weathering occurring the, the fastest. Um, and so I, you know, some other examples I know, you know, limestones, for example, um, to karst environments, I encourage you to go look up and learn a little bit more about karst environments. They're very interesting. Um, you know, where we have weather, uh, those weather or, you know, um, break down a lot faster than in moist environments, but they can actually be very resistant in dry climates. Um, and generally granites, which is what I conclude with you here. So an example where I lived just down the road from this location. Uh, so this is Vitavu. Uh, which is in Wyoming. Um, I lived there for a few years, and this is an example of the Sherman granite there. Um, and so the granites generally are, are weathering pretty slowly across most all climates. But again, this just gives you some example of the different types of geographic uh, components of weathering to help us conclude this video.